we are in a very interesting juncture of discussing Hartree-Fock equations and how they are solved using self consistent fields. We have learned uh, what Hartree-Fock equations are, uh, we have written the Hartree-Fock equation for helium atom right and while doing that we have invoked this effective potential energy of electron 1 at its position R1 due to the presence of electron 2 and we have written it as integral phi r2 phi of r2 star multiplied by phi of r2 divided by r12 d tau ok. Well, I should say dr2 not d tau ok. What does this mean? It means that phi star phi that is essentially charge density. What is the charge density uh, that is given by the phi star phi and the distance is r12. So, that is the uh, interaction between a charge cloud and a point charge right uh, that is the electron electron repulsion ok. Electron number 1 is taken as a point at R1, electron number 2 is taken as a cloud ok. You get similar expressions if you uh, think of say ionic uh, atmosphere in uh, solutions of electrolytes ok, uh, very similar kind of thing ok. And then uh, using it we wrote this effective 1 electron Hamiltonian for electron number 1. The change that we see in this one electron Hamiltonian is the incorporation of this effective potential energy due to electron electron repulsion that uh, we, we have uh, discussed just now. And with that we wrote down Schrodinger equation as usual we said this Schrodinger equation is called Hartree-Fock equation. We also said that Hartree-Fock equation is obtained from variation principle by defining energy like this take the wave function as a product of two orbitals, work out the expectation value of energy using the Hamiltonian for helium atom. So, we have not explicitly used that effective potential here ok, eventually we will reach the same place ok. But this is just what we know for a long long time ok. Then we expand it and some of the double integrals become a single integral, one remains a double integral that is called J12 the Coulomb integral the other ones which essentially give your one electron energies for electron number 1 and electron number 2 they are called I1 and I2. So, what does I, I stand for if I write uh, a general index I for 1 or 2 that would give me a uh, energy of a one electron system and J12 is the electron electron repulsion term ok that is what we have that is how far we got in the last class. Now, we learn how to invoke what is called self consistent fields and try to solve these equations ok. This is the beginning of uh, a very uh, what should I say ubiquitous technique that keeps on coming back in the field of computational chemistry ok. But we will talk about that in a more appropriate time for now what we have is we have this orbital well product of orbitals that is a wave function that we have said. So, we are working under orbital approximation and so if I may remember you the way Atkins puts it is very nice. Atkins says that the meaning of this is that each electron is in its own orbital right. So, electron number 1 its coordinates are defined by its coordinates only. Electron number 2 well sorry what am I saying its wave function is defined by its own coordinates only phi is only a function of R1 nothing to do with R2 phi of R2 is only a function of R2 nothing to do with R1 right. So, we are pretending as if the electrons uh, move around in whatever way they move around that we cannot really talk about trajectories, but their movement of course, there is a repulsion and the wave function gets uh, corrected and all that, but then uh, they move around as if the, the other one is not even there. When they come close together they repel each other, when they go far away they repel each other to a lesser extent all right, but uh, uh, there is no correlation in the movements of the two electrons that is what orbital approximation essentially suggests. Whether that model holds or not uh, let us hope we will get there by the end of uh, this class all right. And we have talked about the Hamiltonian already we make this Hamiltonian operate on this wave function and uh, we get this equation and the other first question that we will answer actually is what is epsilon 1 all right. And this is uh, the effective potential that we talked about earlier great. 
Now let us think a little bit about what the functional form of this uh, R dependent wave function should be well not R dependent capital R remember is uh, combination of R theta and phi. So remembering what we had done for hydrogen atom wave functions we can write it as a product of an R dependent part and a theta phi dependent part capital R multiplied by y. So capital R uh, would lead to a quantum number n the only thing is that uh, eventually n becomes a variational parameter and the theta phi dependent part is associated with the quantum numbers l and m. So the moment I write it like this I have to do something to the Hamiltonian right. Uh, I should uh, actually write the Hamiltonian in terms of spherical polar coordinates also and uh, if you remember what we did in uh, case of hydrogen atom we don't we had showed you 13 well, well we rushed through 13 slides which we did not discuss and that tells us how to generate the uh, Hamiltonian in terms of R theta and phi and then we did separation of variables. So when you do all that I am not going through the steps again uh, they are quite mundane and you do not have to remember the steps you do not even have to remember the uh, final answer but I hope you will not have problems in believe me, me if I write that the equation that we end up with for the R dependent part and we do not bother about the theta phi dependent part because we are discussing helium. In case of helium ground state only 1s orbitals are involved they are theta phi independent so who cares about theta phi right now. So we get this equation in R dependent part the first term and the second term in the second term remember what this L into L plus 1 is that is beta. If you remember the uh, separation of variables in case of hydrogen atom that we had performed this beta turned out to be that L into L plus 1 okay. So exactly similar treatment but uh, for helium not for hydrogen okay this is what we have got okay then what, what have we got here this R of R1 is a wave function in terms of one coordinate that is R1. Then we have something like energy epsilon or epsilon 1 that we have written here I here I have forgotten write, write that subscript 1 and we have an operator that operator essentially what is the operator uh, some differential uh, DDR kind of thing is there so it is a differential equation. So this is a time when we should uh, be really happy and say hey we got a differential equation we have solved so many or well at least we know the solutions of so many uh, this can be solved as well look up a book it can be solved there is a problem. The problem is that in this differential equation in the operator part itself you have a contribution from the wave function and that sort of lands, at, lands us in a little bit of a fix because how are we supposed to get the wave function by solving the equation. But then how do you solve the equation if the wave function is sitting in the form of the operator itself. So this is sort of a uh, egg and chicken problem which came first egg or chicken or is the egg in inside the chicken or what. So uh, we got a problem we cannot really solve it uh, as easily as we solve the differential equation for uh, the uh, hydrogen atom problem but we have come a long way from hydrogen atom problem already and we know many ways in which we can at least have an intelligent guess of wave functions. So since we do not know what the wave function would be uh, and that knowledge is required in order to write the Hamiltonian itself we can make an intelligent guess and we have already discussed at length how many different kinds of trial functions are used and this is uh, what we discussed are actually uh, very classical kind of trial functions there are many more that came later. So we make an intelligent guess of an appropriate wave function and then we evaluate this uh, u effective with it okay that now becomes a number. Now you can solve this, uh, this particular uh, differential equation for the trial wave function what do you get now you get a new set of wave functions will they be exactly the same as a trial wave function not necessarily this is the beauty of this technique. So you guess some function. So uh, what you are doing essentially is that you kind of come up with a rough model of the potential energy with that solve this Schrodinger equation kind of thing and get what the wave function is. That wave function will be for uh, the system that you have modeled using that rough potential energy and uh, mostly 
that wave function that you generate is going to be slightly different usually not very different but slightly different from the trial wave function ok. So, solve the equation and to get what I call improved values of wave functions, wave functions that are closer to reality ok. What do you do then? Well, do it again right. Now, using those wave functions newly generated wave functions plug them into the expression for the effective potential, write the equation once again the Hamiltonian will change, solve it the solution will also change a little bit most likely and you are going to go towards better and better and better match to the reality of wave function. Remember building that ele elephant perhaps you start with a mouse the wave function that you choose and slowly as you add terms and all that mouse becomes fatter and fatter and fatter starts looking like a uh, pig and then like a tapir or an anteater which has a small snout and finally it looks something that is close to the elephant maybe a little thin elephant since you started from a mouse. So, that is the idea ok. So, uh, when there is not much of change in successive iteration then you have what is called self consistent field right. The field that you have generated is now self consistent and that is as good as you can get using the uh, wave functions that you have chosen to work with right. So, the orbitals that you thus generate are called Hartree-Fock orbitals right and usually the guess function that you use are linear combinations of Slater orbitals right. Uh, remember construction uh, drawing of uh, elephant problem there is no restriction on how many functions we want to use, how many coefficients we want to use we just play around with them until uh, we get a suitable match. So, you see you may not end up getting a proper basis set to start with. Suppose you start with one Slater orbital I mean you might get what looks like convergence, but that might may be far away from reality. So, you want to increase the number of terms ok. So, it is not just iteration with one trial function you want to play around with trial functions as well that is what makes it a numerical computational problem ok. Analytically if you want to do it by hand it will take ages and you will get frustrated and not do it right that is why uh, you want computers to do it for you and that is what leads to this uh, very sophisticated software like that is written and is now available some for a charge some uh, in free domain in which with which you can do this computational chemistry calculations and their choice of basis is of utmost important importance not all bases work equally well for all problems. So, here at our level for now we talk about linear combinations of Slater orbitals as the initial guess and then we keep on using this self consistent field method until we get convergence ok. This is called the Hartree Fock Ruthen method which uh, we might mention in the next class I am actually in two minds because we are running out of time we want to talk about molecules not much time is left, but uh, we have to finish what is started let us see ok. That being uh, established we want to now focus on this chap epsilon 1, epsilon 1 looks like energy right and we get it by uh, as an Eigen function of uh, an equation that looks like Schrodinger equation one electron Schrodinger equation. Is it energy? Is it energy of the atom? Is it energy of the orbital or is it something else? What is it? To know that uh, well uh, it is called orbital energy right its expectation value is called the orbital energy and this is how you define it of course. Now, how do you evaluate this again you can expand it. So, this will be integral phi of r 1 star multiplying minus half del 1 square operating on phi of r 1 plus integral phi of r 1 multiplying this u 1 effective r 1 and so on and so forth. So, what you get is sorry I forgot to say that in the first integral you will include this minus z by r 1 as well since I forgot I will write. So, this becomes integral phi of r 1 star please do not forget that when you write a wave function in the bra vector 
you are writing is complex conjugate that is minus half del 1 square minus z by r 1. So, this is a Hamiltonian that you would get for a 1 electron system pretending as if there is no other electron that operates on phi of r 1 that is my first integral. The second integral is integral phi of r 1 u 1 effective of r 1 we do not need to write that bracket phi of r 1 something like that. So, essentially you get j 1 i 1 plus j 1 2 ok. Uh, uh, I hope it is not very difficult for you to see that this u effect u 1 effective actually contains this phi r 2 star 1 by r 1 2. You might be wondering the way I have written it here in my bad handwriting how am I equating this to j 1 2 that is because you have to plug this in there as well right u effect u 1 effective of r 1. So, all this will go in there that is how you will get it. Great. Now, is this the energy of the helium atom? Actually, it is not because if you remember what we discussed earlier, energy of helium atom turned out to be I1 plus I2 plus J12, right. Remember that variational treatment that we did before this? That is what we get. So, it is not the same as epsilon 1. So, epsilon 1 is not really the energy of helium atom. So, what is it? Uh, subtract one from the other epsilon 1 turns out to be E minus I 2 or I can write uh, E equal to epsilon 1 plus I 2 something like that whatever way you want to write. What is I 2? Remember what I 2 is? I 2 is the expectation value of energy for helium right helium no expectation value of a one electron system with the same atomic number as helium what would that be helium has two electrons so if i remove one of those electrons i get a one electron system with the same atomic number as helium what is that is helium plus ion so this i2 essentially is the energy of helium plus ok. Same way you can define I 1 also. So, but th there is a catch here it is energy of helium plus, but using a Hartree-Fock orbital not using your uh, hydrogen atom orbital ok using a Hartree-Fock orbital that we have discussed. So, if we just plug that value what does it turn out to be? So, ionization energy right uh, this minus epsilon 1 turns out to be the ionization energy of helium. What is ionization energy? Energy of Hg plus minus energy of your uh, helium atom. So, essentially it is going to be uh, minus of right hand side so minus epsilon 1. So, we see that this epsilon 1 that we got well at the negative of that gives us a good measure of the ionization energy of helium and that is the celebrated Hoopman's theorem. Okay. Do not forget that the approximation that we use here is that the same set of orbitals can be used for neutral atom and the ion which uh, may or may not be correct or necessary. But then when you do uh, a calculation this is from Clementi's work of 1965 the value of ionization energy that we get is 0 0.919796 atomic unit and from experiment it is 0 0.904 atomic unit. So, not very bad actually ok. So, Koopman's theorem is something that forms a cornerstone in discussion of quantum mechanics of many electron systems. We end the discussion today with another very very interesting uh, perhaps intriguing concept and that is of correlation energy. Remember we had touched upon this a little while ago we said that uh, the moment we use orbital approximation we essentially are saying that the electrons are uncorrelated the motion is uncorrelated 
their expressions might get modified a little bit of course they repel each other, but uh, they move in the same way as they were moving when the other one was not present. Okay? So, all this Hartree-Fock calculation that we do is for uncorrelated electrons. Okay? So, the energy that we get doing the calculation is minus 2.8617 atomic unit. When we do a more exact calculation, when I say exact calculation of course you cannot solve it like that, but when you go back to what we had discussed a couple of classes ago that perturbation theory using 13th order perturbation or that uh, variation method using a large number of terms like 1000 something terms remember. Then the value that we had reported or not reported the value that we had seen at that time was minus 2.9037 atomic units. So, this is as good as it gets. So, using Hartree-Fock method the energy that we get is more than that minus 2.8617 atomic unit. Okay? But then see it is more not because we have not tried to account for uh, these repulsions and all. We have actually worked very hard. Right? We have tried to modify the wave function, we have tried to play around with the field. Right? We have done SCF calculation. So, the only thing that we have not done is that we have not considered the correlation between electrons. We have not considered that motion of one electron can affect the motion of the other. What does it mean? Uh, you know sometimes uh, celebrities do not like each other. Right? So, in a party if one, the moment one celebrity enters another celebrity go, leaves by the other door that is correlation. Two electrons behave like that in an atom. So, otherwise they would move in whichever, whatever way, but now if they happen to come close together, if they see that they are going to come close together, maybe they avoid each other that would be correlation. And what we are saying is that this difference in energy, what is the difference in energy? Correlation energy turns out to be uh, minus 0 0.0420 atomic unit. You think that is a small number? It is not. It is like 1.14, well minus 1.14 electron volt, significant for the systems that we are talking about. So, what we learn from here is very interesting. Electrons are the celebrities of atomic world. They find a way of avoiding each other when they are in the same atom and the energy that they save by avoiding each other is about 1.14 electron volt. You get what I am saying? If we do not account for correlation then the value that I get is minus 2.8617. When we account for correlation unknowingly, when we do those exact calculations we are not really explicitly saying that okay, electrons are correlated. All we are doing is that we are trying to minimize the energy and your upper limit theorem tells us that you can get as close to the uh, actual energy as possible and actual energy would involve correlation even though we cannot cal calculate it. Right? So, the difference gives us the correlation energy. So, electrons to these 2 electrons of helium end up saving 1.14 electron volt energy for the atom by moving in an intelligent manner and avoiding each other. I strongly suggest that you also read this, we have followed Macquarie's uh, approach, but please also read this from Pillar's book, their notation is a little different. So, you will have to go back and read a little more and in fact they have used something that we thought we will discuss, but then for the want of time we are not getting into they have used something called Virial theorem. Okay? And using Virial theorem they have reached the same conclusion and they have used some very nice language which I have now forgotten, but it essentially says electrons in that atom find a way of avoiding each other smart particles. Right? That is the in my opinion most interesting thing that we have learned in our discussion today.